Here's a fully specced out MacBook Pro 13 inch 2020 M1. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and it has two terabytes of SSD. That's the max amount of SSDs you can get from Apple. On this side is the Intel version. It's the 2020 MacBook Pro 13 inch Intel version the last model before it went to the M1. This one is also fully spec'd out, uh, except for the SSD, I, I didn't cap that out. So it has 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's an i7, it's the highest processor, and it's a two terabyte SSD, not four. It can go up to four, I, I went to two. So uh, I'm gonna, in this video, talk about some of the reasons why I switched to the M1 and I'm ditching the Intel. The reasons why I went with the M1 is that the M1 chip is completely optimized by Apple. With the Intel, there were some, it, it, it always felt fast for, for what I got it with, but having used the M1 for a week now, uh, just all of the native Apple apps just open up faster, everything's quicker, everything about it is, is more efficient. Uh, number two is the battery life. The M1 has up to 20 hours of battery life, whereas the Intel version maxed out at 10, but even then it was more like seven. I've run in, the longer I've owned, I've owned this for about a year now, and I've noticed the battery life draining really fast on not that processor intensive apps. I would just have it on Zoom or I'd be you know, on a co conference call and then I'd see the battery drain really fast. So far the M1 has been good, well it's brand new, but it's been way better with battery efficiency. Next is the heat. The M1, as far as my usage so far, doesn't get as hot as the Intel. The Intels, this is notorious for getting very, very hot with just average use and the fans kick in right away. There's something about the whatever, however it manages the thermals, it doesn't do it very well and it gets really hot. The M1 does not get hot and I haven't noticed the fans going all the way yet. Uh, I'm not using this laptop for heavy video editing. I have a iMac for that. I need it for av very light video editing, if that, very light photo editing. I mostly use it for my general production and writing. I don't use it for uh, heavy visual effects or editing, but I wanted the ability to do that. Otherwise I would have had, I would have just bought the uh, MacBook Air M1 as opposed to the MacBook Pro M1. Another thing I like about the M1 is that it has the exact same body as the Intel. So I have shells, I already have some accessories, some uh, sleeves and stuff for the Intel that I had purchased and all of that stuff fits on the M1 without a problem. Now there are some drawbacks going with the M1 rather than the Intel. The main drawback uh, I've noticed that everybody say is that the, the highest Intel version has four USB uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports, two on each side, whereas the M1 only has two. And yes, that is very limiting and um, especially to have only on one side. I would have preferred, if they were only gonna give you two, I wish they had one on each side. That way you, you have an option of moving your power adapter. One solution to get over the fact that there's only two ports instead of four is to buy one of these hubs. This is a hub from uh, 12 South, it's a Stego. I reviewed this on, on this channel and what this hub does is not only give extra ports that you need because you only have USB-C and not the uh, standard USB. Not all the hubs do this, but this hub offers pass-through power. So you connect the power adapter to the hub and then when you connect the hub to the MacBook, it, it not only gives you all of the ports, gives you all of these extra ports, but it also gives you the power. So you don't necessarily need four ports because with this hub, it gives you those extra ports plus your power. So if you have a, a hard drive that you're editing on, you can have the hard drive go directly into one port and then have this hub here so that you can have a monitor, an external monitor, only limited to one. You only get one 
monitor with this this one you have i think up to two this one only one and you can have your power and other ports uh, with and use your macbook pro for editing it or if you want to use you know more more or if you want to put more peripherals on you can have it that way and it seems to work okay there are a few quirks still with the m1 that i think they're just some software fixes that it, that needs to happen uh, powering the M1 on and off, I've noticed that that was kind of a, there were some weird things going on where it would just freeze and then the screen would just shut off and turn purple and then that's it. I, I didn't have any of those problems on the Intel, but I'm noticing that randomly in M1. It's not a consistent problem, but it happens. Another problem I had with the M1 is that I just used their a Apple's dongle, USB-C dongle. This is one has another USB-C, uh, USB-A, and then uh, HDMI. So I had this plugged in here and I was watching some, doing some stuff on the computer. And then I just left this plugged into the computer overnight. And apparently the Mac was draining the battery because by plugging this into the USB port, USB-C Thunderbolt port, it thought something was plugged in, I guess. and it just drained the battery and the next night when I pulled this adapter out, it, it was hot to the touch. So something's going on with some software hardware that's draining the battery when you have peripherals plugged in to that port. There's something going on with the M1 ports that it doesn't seem they, they had fixed. So those are the reasons why I upgraded to the M1. Again, it's really just the battery efficiency, the battery life, and then the efficiency with the app, native Apple apps. Otherwise, the Intel is still a pretty good computer.